Uh, hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we have with us Madhuri Verma, who is a technical delivery manager by profession, but a coach by heart. Madhuri is an alumnus of ISB Hyderabad, which is also a topic of discussion, and she is currently working in Barclays. She has been a GMAT verbal tutor for over two years. She is a published author, certified public speaker, and a go-to person for all things academic, career, and self-development. This is also evident from her YouTube channel where she posts videos on MBA preparation and professional life. Madhuri's knack for spotting students' area of concern combined with her honesty, candidness, customized hands-on approach sets her apart as a tutor. So let's welcome Madhuri, but after the music. So hey Madhuri, uh, our viewers already know about you and it's time to get started with our questions and let's get started with your academic and professional background. Uh, so I'm an engineer as my undergraduate degree goes. I completed my B.Tech in computer science back in 2014. Got started as a software developer with Barclays, worked for three years, joined ISB, uh, which was again a, a life-changing story and we'll, we'll cover that probably. After my graduation, I got rehired by Barclays as a product delivery manager. Uh, so I worked with uh, the same kind of teams of which I was a part of, but this time on the management and the business side, which has really been interesting. Uh, that's very well summarized, Madhuri. So as you said that uh, after engineering, you became a software engineer and you were working in Barclays. And that was, uh, I think Barclays is a very famous company and it was a cool job also for many people out, out there, but you had a motivation of doing an MBA. So what ignited this dream of uh, having an MBA degree and becoming a people's manager? I actually never wanted to be an engineer. And that's, that, that's something that, that just happened to for me. Just like for a lot of people, they don't want to get into engineering. That's something else that they want to pursue. But because that dream doesn't materialize, engineering is what they end up doing. For me also, something similar was the case. So I went through uh, the four years of engineering somehow, sailing through still with distinction because I've been good academically, thankfully. But when I started my job with Barclays as a software developer, I realized that it's just not me to sit behind a computer and code. I really enjoy client facing roles. I enjoy interacting with customers, bringing in value and seeing that impact right away of, my, of what my actions has, have produced. And that's something that helped me realize that, no, I, I think it's time to move on. Uh, it's time to move to the management side of things. And that's how the MBA dream was born. Uh, that's great. So uh, having a dream of doing an MBA and preparing for GMAT are two different things. And when you have a full time job, it becomes really tough to make time for your preparation. But you did it pretty well. So how did you manage time? And how did you score so well in GMAT? So tell us all the stories about it. I actually didn't score so well the first time around because I, I took it a little bit lightly. As I mentioned previously, right, I had, I had always been really good with academics. So I thought that I would be able to sail very well because my, thankfully, my verbal has always been pretty strong. And quant, I thought, uh, could be managed with just the official guide and, you know, studying from some other sources here and there. Unfortunately, that was not the case. On the day of the exam, I was panicking so much. I got so nervous that... At one point, I, I was just having chills and I was sweating because of, because of getting nervous. That really impacted my performance and I was not able to get a good score. Um, I really doubted my cap capability uh, as, as a person, as an, uh, as an intellectual. I don't know what else, but I totally started doubting myself. It took me two more weeks uh, to come to terms to the fact that, yes, uh, I think I did not score to the point which would be required for top B schools and I will have to appear for the exam again. That motivation and willpower in itself uh, gave me a huge level of motivation to start my prep again. And this time around, I was very sure that I wanted to prioritize that over everything else in my life. 
So I stopped hanging out with friends. I stopped uh, hanging around after work with colleagues. Uh, I strongly put boundaries around my work hours and ensured that whatever responsibilities I had and the tasks that I, were, I was assigned were completed in the time duration that I set out for myself. So nine to six, very strict. Uh, I would just leave office at six until and unless, of course, it was a, a off day wherein I had to stay back. More often than not, I would just leave uh, and manage things uh, from home. And that level of motivation, I think, uh, took, uh, took its course and bore fruits when I finally saw the score in my second attempt, which was uh, two months later. And I finally got the score, which, which I knew that, yeah, this is strong enough uh, to put forth into, in front of B-Schools. I have it's actually shared all of this story and much more uh, in a YouTube video of mine, which I think if you can share the link, it should show up somewhere yeah. here. Um, and you can also share it in the description box of your video. Sure, sure. Yeah, guys, so that video is actually very, very motivating. And it gives you a structured study plan for how you can ace your GMAT with your job within two months. But uh, as she said, a lot of hard work and dedication and also discipline went into it. So definitely that will help you resource wise, but you have to maintain your dedication to get a good score in GMAT. So now your GMAT is done and you started applying for multiple uh, universities uh, and MBA colleges and uh, you got accepted from ISB. But there must be other uh, other colleges from where you got acceptance or if not, you must have a preference of applying only to ISB. So just tell us about the story of selection of ISB. I actually wanted to apply to uh, schools outside of India also. So I did go forward with a couple of schools in the US. I did not apply to any outside of India or US for like my own personal reasons. And at that stage, I would say I was pretty immature and naive uh, about the entire process. I did not have anybody to guide me through it. Uh, I was handling it all on my own. I had heard so many scam stories about all of these consultants out there uh, and, and consulting agencies that I didn't want to risk uh, the hard earned money with them. So I totally just handled everything on my own, which I believe was a big mistake because even though I ended up getting interview invites from a couple of schools in the US and ISB also, of course, I could not go through beyond that point because of course I did not know what, what they expect, what exactly happens in the process. What are they looking for? Uh, so there were a couple of colleges which did reach out uh, even after the interviews saying that, you know, they waitlisted me. Uh, but by that time I had the ISB uh, admit and I had to confirm because the confirmation deadline was running um, past beyond the waitlisted deadline also. So I couldn't afford to wait. Uh, I had to confirm my admission. I think I was happy about it. In the end, it has worked out really well. And I also want to point out to all the viewers right now that if you are also um, at at the stage at which I was five years back when I was applying, if you are also scared about all of these uh, different options available out there and everything, feel free to reach out to me. I do provide consultations, one-on-one -on -one consultations to people uh, because having gone through it myself, I know how you are feeling and I know how you can achieve whatever you want to achieve. So yeah, I'll, I hope Amit will share the link uh, to reach out to me directly in the description box of his video. If yeah. you want to, basically, if you want a faster response uh, and an immediate response uh, and, you know, uh, good response time, yeah, reach out to me on Instagram. LinkedIn, I'm, I am active, yes, but I don't check it as frequently as I check Instagram. Yeah, that's very uh, nice to know. So now let's come to your ISB experience. Because many people fantasize about this university, uh, to be honest, like it sometimes uh, people think that it's beyond I am. It's not uh, because it is pretty new. It is very fancy. It gives you a one year MBA program and the graduates of this university are doing great. And also Ankur Variko is from uh, ISB. So people mm -hmm. like people follow him a lot. So uh, we want to know like what makes ISB unique and how was your experience with ISB? I wouldn't be able to speak about what makes ISB unique. I believe every person has their own personal set of criteria, what they look for in an MBA college. Yeah. And if they think that all of those criteria are tick marked by ISB, then yes, ISB will be unique for you. For me, that was the case. And that's why I thought it was special. And that's why I decided to apply for it. 
Uh, another major reason was because it accepted GMAT at the work ex level that I was. I did not want to go for CAT. I, I appeared for CAT and I could see right through it that, you know, this, this is going to take years to achieve. And even if I get a 99.99 percentile, I have no guarantee that I'm going to get an interview request from top, the top three IIMs. Uh, beyond that, I wouldn't have settled for anything less. So that's why I think ISB was the way to go for me. Um, in terms of uh, my ISB experience, I would say it was quite life changing because as I mentioned a couple of minutes back throughout the entire application process, looking back now, I feel I was very naive at that stage. And being at ISB was the first time that I was actually staying away from home. It was the first time that I was actually on my own. Uh, and up until then, I had been a big fish in a small pond. Now I was a bigger fish in an ocean and there were other bigger fishes also there. So the competition was at a separate level altogether. Uh, that enabled me to raise my game, uh, up my skills and also be in an environment where I'm comfortable rejecting ideas, choosing one thing over other managing my time even better than I was doing previously. Uh, so overall, it was quite an intellectually and personally maturing journey, I would say. Yeah, that's nice. And that's uh, great to know. So another unique aspect of ISB is its fees for Indian standards is very, very expensive. And if we consider that it gives you a one year MBA, it becomes even more uh, expensive. So we want to know how ISB justifies its uh, expense and uh, is like how the one year MBA thing work, like how they can consolidate the two years program into one year, like is how the things work in ISB. How uh, is it very fast paced? Is it very hard to take? Just give a brief about it. I wouldn't be able to speak about why the fees is so high because I do not represent ISP. Uh, I do believe that yes, it is on the higher side and that's my own personal opinion. But uh, I could, I cannot comment on, you know, why that is so high and how it is justified. Speaking of uh, how the entire course is structured, mm -hmm. it's exactly similar to a two-year course, just that it's consolidated in an entire year. So whatever you would do in a two-year MBA is what you would do in a one-year MBA, just as a, at a very fast-paced mode. So for example, in a two-year MBA, uh, let's say your first year would have four semesters with three months uh, of per semester. In a, in a one-year MBA, you would have five weeks. So like in three months, you are actually covering two semesters rather than just one semester. So everything is definitely a lot fast-paced. You have to manage your time. You have to prioritize uh, on what you need to focus on. Uh, it basically just teaches you management skills that are expected of you when you sp step out of ISB. And it Im improves and enables you as a person to become more adept uh, at handling real life situations. There have been times where after graduating from ISB, alumni and myself also have felt that things are going quite slow. I mean, we, we are not getting as much pressure as we have gotten used to during our time at ISB, which is amazing. And that's why most of the alumni have ended up uh, venturing into other things, uh, utilizing their time even further beyond their work tasks because they are used to, uh, you know, ma ma managing everything together in that short amount of time. So they can't make do with um, less responsibilities or less work uh, anymore. They, they have to do more. Uh, and that's just like uh, upping their game to another level. Yeah. So uh, a moment back, we were talking about what's so unique about ISB. I think this is the most unique thing uh, when we compare from I between ISB and IM. And actually, you have a video about ISB versus IM also that yeah, you recently have, posted. So we'll also put the link for that video here so that uh, people can, can, can understand more like what makes ISB so unique. So now coming to the career development part that ISB provides, uh, do you think ISB gives you uh, the platform to go to big companies and big MNCs or start your own ventures? Like how ISB promotes career development in their university? Uh, there are a lot of opportunities. So you can either sit for uh, campus placements or venture out and search for jobs on your own. They're two separate things, of course. Uh, so when you're sitting down for campus placements, all of the assistance is provided to you right from the day you step on campus. There are multiple uh, uh, student engagement uh, opportunities that are set up wherein alumni visit campus uh, and conduct resume reviews. They conduct mock interviews. 
they also conduct educational sessions imparting knowledge about the different kind of roles that students could get into in a specific specialization after they graduate from isb or during the placement season of isb there are a lot of top firms also that visit isb like mbbs visit big fours visit uh, for for consulting specifically uh, beyond that also there are a lot of to- uh, tech consulting uh, roles product management marketing finance um, you name it and the roles are there so a lot of opportunities definitely for ex- uh, for the ones who are interested in entrepreneurship uh, isb also has an entrepreneurship cell uh, and another uh, uh, setup called strine where an entrepreneurs can uh, portray ideas of their startups and any other uh, initiatives that they have in mind and then if it, it is uh, selected as one of the top ones isb funds it with the help of the club that they have set up so even for entrepreneurs or, or aspiring entrepreneurs there is a chance for you to get support from isb and once you graduate the alumni base is so amazing that even if you reach out for any single thing at all uh, you will receive at least a couple of responses from people and the alumni base is something that is the best take away that any isb graduate could take could take i have vouched i can vouch for them personally uh, i have myself experienced how helpful the cohort is and i would not uh, want anybody to you know um, miss out on that now we will uh, move towards our final segment where you will give your message for mba aspirants uh, who are willing to take an mba within isb within iims or maybe in abroad so tell us what is your final message for them having gone through it i know that the process can be really tough it can be demanding it can be exhausting but trust me when i say it it will all be worth it at the end so just stay calm work as much as you can and give it your best shot and if you need any assistance at all with any aspect of your entire admissions process feel free to reach out to me uh, via the link that is mentioned in amit's uh, description box uh that's very well summarized madri i think uh, the viewers had a very good time watching this video and guys if you have come this far please do not forget to like subscribe and uh, share the video and also go to madri's channel uh, subscribe to her channel and watch her very informative and very useful videos that i have personally watched and that's why i invited her to my channel So guys uh, we will be coming back with more content week after week and until next time peace